Recently, I started a series of videos about creating dailies in DaVinci Resolve for Avid Media Composer. The first four videos that I've done so far cover how to take camera files off of a hard drive or a camera card, bring them into DaVinci Resolve and create dailies out of them. I created ALE files uh, to create Avid bins and then I imported those files into Avid. So this is video number five, organizing video dailies in Avid Media Composer. The next few steps of the process are going to be about how to manage the video dailies and the metadata, how to sync audio files, and generally how to organize your synced project before you get started on editing. So this process can take kind of a long time, but it's really, really important to have a really strong setup at the beginning of a project so that when you get down the line later, you're not going to have a lot of problems relinking to your high-res media. So I have Avid open here. I had previously created three days worth of DNx36 dailies using DaVinci Resolve down res from my original camera files, which were red camera files that were shot at 5K. So here we are in my project. I've got three bins, one for each card on the first day of shooting. Now I would probably go through this process and do all of the cards for all of the days of shooting, but for the purposes of this video, we'll just do the one day. Day one, I've got card one, card two, and card three. All of this media is online. The Avid MXF files are in my Avid MXF folder and all of the clips in these bins are pointing to the correct files. And you can actually triple check that because I've got data burn in on my original video files. So you can see the source time code, the real name and the original file name of the R3D camera file. And you can actually sort of spot check and double check to make sure that the it's the same name as the file name. So you can be confident that everything has linked up properly in this bin. So now I'm just going to demonstrate really quickly some of the best practices for managing the metadata on your video files before you move on to the next step of bringing in the audio and syncing it. So I have this custom layout here for my bin that I've created that you can just see some really basic information about the clips. We have obviously the clip name. We have a tape name, which has been auto-generated from the real name in Resolve. Um, I have a camera roll column, which is currently empty, which we'll probably fill in shortly. It shows me that my audio files are offline for these clips, but in fact, I know that the audio tracks on these clips were empty. So I actually only created video dailies. I didn't create any audio files from Resolve because the audio was empty. So I don't really care that that is listed as being offline. Um, you can also see what drive the media lives on. You can find out what the format is, the start and end time code, and a lot of other information that is really, really helpful. Um, if I scroll across, I also have some other columns that I think are going to be useful in the case of video. Um, I have a column for production day. There's a column for shoot date, which has actually been auto-populated by Resolve, but it looks like it's not at all right. I'm seeing something that says it was from 2001, um, which I know isn't right because this is from a film I worked on a couple of years ago. So what you can actually do, what I often recommend to do is actually just to put the shoot date into this column. They actually put the dates in the folder name so I can see that day one was September 23rd, 2017 the 24th and then the 25th. So those are the dates that they shot. So I'm actually going to use that information and put it into Avid um, just because sometimes what will happen is a producer or somebody will ask me like, oh, there was this great B-roll footage that we shot on like the Friday and I wasn't for that scene, it was for a different scene, but can you find it? And you know, if I have something that's written based on the date of the shoot, as well as the production day, it makes it a lot easier to find the stuff quickly when somebody's asking for it. So I just put in the date, you know, 2017, September 23rd, and then I'll literally just like copy. And it takes like a couple of minutes, but you can just really quickly go down the column and paste that date in all of the fields for each of the clips. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm also going to put the production day in, which in this case, it was day one. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to fill in my production day column. Another thing that I'm going to fill in is this cam roll column, just because I like to have as much information as possible. So I can see based on the file name, what the camera roll was. I also know based on the card what it is like this was camera roll a001 card two is camera roll a002 and card three is a003 i'm actually lucky that the production was very organized and their camera roll numbers moved up incrementally as they went through their project it doesn't always happen but it's always nice when it does so i'm just going to put a001 as a camera roll for each of these clips and now i'm going to go through and i'm going to fill in the camera roll column 
and the production day column and the shoot day column for my two other video cards as well. Okay, so now that I've done most of those columns, there's a couple more things I wanna do here. I like to take some of the really crucial information and duplicate it into additional column fields. For example, everything here that's in this name field is really important because it actually points back to the original name of the original camera file. If something were to happen and someone were to rename these clips, there's other metadata that would probably lead us back to the correct clips, but there could be a situation where that wasn't the case. And it's also useful if you're gonna do any kind of data burn in on your outputs, if you wanna have a column that is very specifically the file name, but maybe you wanna rename these clips based on the scene and the take and the slate number or something like that. So what you can do is you can take a column in Avid and you can duplicate all of the data from that column into a different column. So it actually shows up twice. So I have this column called file name, which I like to use to actually specifically store the name of the file that the clip is from. So I just basically select the entire column by clicking on the column name. I clip, click control D or command D on Apple. And it says, hey, what, what column do you want to duplicate into? And then I'll just scroll down and find the file name column and click OK. And now uh, when I scroll over here, all of the file names are automatically pasted into the file name column. I'll do the same thing on card two and card three. Okay, so now I've done that. I mean, there's a lot more metadata that you can choose to put in. And if you're an assistant working for an editor, some of the things you could always think about is you could think about putting in your actual scene and take numbers into your metadata for each of these clips as well. When I'm working on my own, I don't worry about that because I actually just usually rename the clips with that information. But sometimes you'll find a dailies technician at a post house will be really, really great and really organized and put all of that information in. So there's a number of different things that you could do or ways that you could organize it, but this is as much as I feel is necessary for me most of the time doing my dailies. So now I have a bin for each of my cards, um, and this is these are all video files, but none of these video files have any audio in them. And that's because the production filmed double system audio, meaning they had a sound recordist on set and they recorded all the audio separately into separate files. So what I'm going to do in my next video is I'm going to show the process of importing the audio that's associated with these clips and how to get ready to sync that audio in Avid to create new clips that have audio and video joined together based on the timecode. So that's coming up next.